Mm -hmm. Well, good morning. We're here today with George, and we're back to our text part. And you'll have to help me with the pronunciation. Uh, but with the founder, of, I'm sorry. Go ahead. George Benoliella. So George is okay. All right, great. Yeah. Uh, from Nest Apple, and I'm so excited to talk about this company today because they just have identified that change is necessary and. I, I was talking to George offline and he started to explain something to me and I thought, oh, I can't wait to interview him and have him, you know, tell the world what he sees. So tell me again, George, what, uh, well, first of all, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. I, I, I feel quite honored to have you here. I, it's just great to see uh, what you've done. So tell us a little bit, like, what made you do it? Uh, how'd you get started? Of course. So... The concept from the concept comes from a simple conclusion. Uh, over the last, I would say, 30, 40 years, uh, the fees that people pay across all asset classes got reduced about 99.9%. So, 30 years ago, if you were to buy Amazon stocks or Microsoft stocks, you had to pay thousands of dollars in fees. Today, it's 4.95. Uh, think about hotel fees, Uber, uh, rental cars. There's no more fees that you pay, or at least the amount of fees you pay got reduced drastically. There's only one type of fees that did not get reduced, is real estate broker fees. And what is also a little bit contradictory is that 30 years ago, brokers had the real expertise. They, they had pagers. They were sending the listings each other over fax. They were... Uh, I would say, I wouldn't call it necessarily hard worker, but they had a real insight into the properties. Today, everything is on the internet. You can click on Zillow, you can browse, you don't even have to see the property. You can see comps, uh, you can see if the holder of a house has a mortgage. So the question and that we came up with is, why would you still pay 5 to 6% to a broker? And I'm a real estate investor like you, Linda. Yeah. I've been buying a few properties in Manhattan, and after a few properties, when I got to, to an open house, then I see a broker who took six pictures of a, a property with his iPhone. Uh, he posts it on Zillow or Trulia or Streetizy. I come unrepresented, and I uh, buy the property, and that guy gets a $50,000 commission from the seller. I was scratching my head and thought, well, that that should not be possible because that's not efficient. So we came up with a concept with the approval of the DOJ and the Attorney General, which is a cashback mechanism. So we are a licensed real estate broker, just competing with all of the big guys out there. Uh, we buy, we sell, we list, we do everything from rental sales, um, just like the other brokers. The only difference between us and the other brokers is that another broker typically will have to share his commission 50-50 with his company. We are going to share our commission one-third for us and two-thirds for the client. So every transaction, the client gets two-thirds back of the commission. And from what is left for us, we give a portion, typically 10% of what's left to a charity, uh, recommended by the buyer. So you have to look at us a little bit like, uh, I would say, a credit card where when you buy real estate, you get a 2% cash back net of taxes. So you don't have to pay taxes on this check. Uh, we've been, uh, we are one year old. We've been all over the press because people call us either the, the, the real estate broker paying their customers. So we are all over the paper with big checks back to customers. Uh, we opened in Connecticut, so now we are operating in New York and Connecticut, and the goal is to open in 2019 in New Jersey to have a significant market share in the three-state area. So that's a, a long story short. Oh, no, that's a great story. I had to hold, I had to hold so many questions in, though. I, I love that. I love that how you said you identified. I love your uh, how you built up to it with really good, solid examples of fees that have been reduced. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I'm just, I'm probably one of those uh, 
I, I worry about pleasing everyone. And I think now, how are the real estate uh, agents, how is that world taking to you out there? I'll call it beating a drum against why they're getting paid so much. Have they been, um, have, have you been allowed in any realtor associations? Uh, what's their, what's their feedback? So absolutely, we are part, we have been admitted at the Real Estate Board of New York. We are in every association. Uh, what, what's actually interesting is that the young uh, brokers, when I say young, I would say <clears throat> 30 and uh, I would say 40 and under are, I mean, first of all, we, we, we did not have a single, uh, a single bad deal or a single realtor refusing to work for, with us, yeah. or we did not really have pushback. Uh, people are really not reluctant to work for us because we bring them deals and professionalism. Uh, now, uh, the people under the realtors under 40, I would say, they look at us, they are impressed, they tell us, I wish I had your idea. They ask us if we recruit, they ask us lots of questions, how it works, and they are impressed by how efficient we can be with technology. And uh, think about a co board in New York when you have. A, 700 pages to put together and to review. Uh, they are quite impressed by the work. I would say the older realtors, people in their 60s and 70s, they look at us a little bit like a threat, like taxi drivers are looking at Ubers and they still do the deal, but they are dragging their feet a little bit or they tell us, you guys don't know what you're doing. Uh, you are just up and coming, you've been real estate, doing real estate for a year when I've been doing real estate for 40 years. So we've had the mixed feelings from the broker community, but we've been admitted to every single uh, board on the East Coast. Well, I, I have to tell you, you, we talked a little bit offline and I, I love, first of all, I love what you're doing. I love that you've identified the technology solutions that, I, I, and that was a really good story. I don't know if you know much about me, but I've worked with technology yep. and solutions uh, from actually New York City, from a, a company that was not really estate related. Uh, so I believe in efficiencies, I really do. And our, our business model like yours is really built yep. on, we had to do more with less. We weren't charging a full commission, but we weren't doing uh, you know the full service. And there, there's a market for that middle, you know? And, yep. and, and I, I um, I credit you for saying that, hey guys, we really respect what you do, but we really believe that the consumer is leading up to doing a lot of the work, like an educated consumer. So depending on who the client is, they want to do their own research. They want to come up with the 10 houses or 10 units or 10 co-ops that they want to see. They're not really putting a realtor through that like they did and I'm in that other age category, so we don't want to paint too much with a brush and say those over 40. So I believe in technology. I believe in what it does for you. And, and I, I worry about those that are in that category that are trying to shun it um, because I study like the impact of uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, yeah, yeah. like how we can draw so much information. And I think those in that category that are turning their back on uh, you know, solutions like your company or any solutions like that are really making a big mistake. And unfortunately that happens through all age groups. Like they have to be, I, I'd almost say it's a self-confidence and a self-learning issue. They've got to be about keeping up with the times uh, and, and they'll be valuable in a machine age, right? But if they, turn their back on it, that's, that's when they're going to lose. <laughs> that, that, is, that is absolutely correct. Uh, our goal is to, to make the market more efficient. And also one thing we are very proud about, uh, every transaction we give uh, an average of $1,000 to a charity. Uh, and we ask also the customer to give to a local charity which operates where the closing took place. And that's also very important for us. I love, I, I really love that. I mean, what a business <laughs> Thank you. And, and who, are, so tell me a little bit about their, tell our audience, I should say a little bit about who are the, um, I'll call it the members, the founders of the company 
and how, what made you, uh, I mean, you did give us a great story, but what are the things, let's say, that people don't know about and they should know about that you're doing for, you know, in, in addition to what you just said? Oh, of course. So we own 100% of the company. Uh, we had investors knocking at our doors to actually feed the company and friends of family. Okay. But we have not done any round for, for now. For a simple reason, we don't need to. Uh, the company is already profitable, already oh. growing. This is our first year of operation, and we are already making money and reinvesting this money into growth. Uh, into the founders, uh, the whole idea came about a year and a half ago when after really getting a no it was my fifth property in New York. I was really getting annoyed. Uh, I was seeing a property. I go see it with my wife. And I go see it. I, I want to pay full asking price for it. But I scratch my head and I say, if I say full asking price, the, the, asking, the, the listing broker is going to make literally $50,000. And I ask my wife, who is an attorney, why don't you represent me? And you're going to get half of the commission. She did it. It was smooth, and we get 25 back. And as soon as she got, um, as soon as she became a broker from an attorney, every day we started getting phone calls from friends and family saying, "Can you represent me in this rental? Can you represent me in this buy?" We did a few deals with friends, and we started receiving uh, invite invitation for brunch, a gift card from Bloomingdale's. And I told her, but this doesn't make sense. You saved that person $30,000 and they invite us for brunch. There must be a, a business here. And as soon as we did, I did a, a very, so the website that you see, yes. uh, I did it myself. I, I designed it myself. I had to learn. I did the SEO myself. Uh, I, if you go to listings, I plugged the MLS onto the website. Everything is with the authorization and everything is legal. And I turned an idea into a business. So it's not as professional as the Corcoran and Douglas Elliman and Compass out there. But at the same time, uh, we don't have an office on Fifth Avenue. We don't have expensive copy machines, secretaries. Uh, we don't send catalogs to people. We save on marketing and all of the money we save, we give it back to the consumer. Uh, an average deal, if we want to talk money, our, our average deal exactly is at a million dollars, uh, 1.1 to be precise, but it's a million dollars. Uh, we did deals as the, the smallest deal we did was 150, it was in the Catskills. The biggest deal we did was $4 million. Uh, an average deal is about a million. From this deal, uh, as you know, the commission is 6%. So we get paid the Cobrock uh, 30,000 to us we give 20,000 back to the client. And from the 20,000 back to the client, he does not have to pay taxes. We are left with 10. From the 10, we give 1,000 to charity. So nine is actually our profit. Okay, at the end of the day, you're doing it for what I'll call a very lean amount. And you, you've worked those numbers and not only did you find it sustainable, you made a profit at the end of the year. I think everybody really needs to hear that. So even with all those reductions, in, yes. now obviously this works well in the New York community. I, I, I think I mentioned, I used to work there. I understand the housing there, Connecticut. That's also a great, you don't see this business model or do you based on um, explosive growth, let's say, as you, you know grow over the years, can you start to get into, let's say, more challenging? Like, so, but if you stay in the urban areas like a Chicago and LA, you see those in your future? So, the, first of all, we want to have, uh, the goal is really to have a 1% market share in any area where we operate. Okay. Uh, our business model is illegal in 10 states out of 50, so it's legal in, in, in uh, 40. The states where it's illegal are pretty much the south belt of the U.S., like Louisiana, uh, Mississippi, uh, Nebraska, Oklahoma, where you cannot give cash back. Okay. Uh, our, business, our business is viable, I would say, in the areas where um, the, the, the home prices 
are above a certain threshold, sure. I would say. Uh, I would say above two, three hundred thousand dollars a home, anybody okay. could be interested. And when you ask people in pretty much anywhere around the country, uh, how did you find your house? Uh, and then a common answer that you're going to get is I found it myself and I emailed it to my realtor to yeah. organize an appointment. We think then a realtor should not get paid $25,000 to uh, organize an appointment. But to answer your question, uh, the growth, we want to grow first in some key areas where we can be relevant, especially in the East Coast. The West Coast is tough for us because there's so many startups and it's hard to run an East Coast, West Coast business. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but if we can be relevant, on the East Coast first, uh, getting to 1% market share in New York, Connecticut, uh, New Jersey, then growing uh, Washington, Massachusetts, maybe Colorado and Florida, that would be a significant amount of business for now to grow. We don't yeah. necessarily want to go to the West Coast now. Yeah, no, I, I, I like that. That's just a, a really good focus. I like that uh, you have a goal of you know the 1%. I think that all makes sense. So like when I step, step back, I think my question is wrong. I think it's a great idea to stay geographically and grow to where you, people know your name, let's say, in the market, you're making a difference and that will organically grow. As, Absolutely. You know, I, I love and, that idea. Um, and to talk, about, to talk about numbers and business again, uh, you, you are from New York, so remember, the five boroughs of New York, which is really a concentrated area, so uh, yeah. Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens, Staten Island, uh, Bronx, there's about 20,000 residential deals a year, okay, 20,000. It's not a lot, but if we can capture 200, so it's 1%, right. this is a 1% market share, and 200 deals, it's only one a day, so it is not a crazy target. Right, right, exactly. Oh, I love that. So it's you and your wife, and uh, remind me, where are you from? I'm from France, and she is from uh, Costa Rica. Okay, and, and because I do believe that I read maybe a story uh, where you talked about the difference between the countries and the commission. Can, I, can you fill Co me on what correct. I remember? So um, in, in any part of the world, uh, especially France, UK, Australia, anywhere in Europe, the commissions for brokers are about two or two and a quarter percent, sometimes two and a half. Okay. And the market is less liquid and is less transparent. Commission, like the, sometimes the closing costs are higher due to uh, higher taxes and uh, registration, like they call it droit de mutation in France, but the brokers usually get two and a half Two and a half, I would say, is on the high side, uh, typically in central Paris and central London. So why would that be six in Manhattan, which is a liquid market and also where the values of the properties is higher? Uh, it's due to the lobbies of realtors, and they just manage to keep it this way. We also think that the, the broker fees are going to get reduced. We also see five as the new six, four as the new five, and soon probably three. And we are ahead of the curve. Okay. So you 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 do believe that. So when do you do you follow? Um, I can't think of their name. Inman. Uh, I follow Inman Real yes. Estate. I like all their articles. Yes. They always do. How have you talked to anybody there? Have Have they interviewed you yet? Not yet. No. We 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 really uh, are lean. So we, we did not reach out to them yet. Uh, we reached out to a couple of publications at the beginning before we launched okay. a year ago, like okay. The Real Deal or others. Uh, a few of those people told us, you guys are just a concept. Come back when you have a proof of concept and when that works. So I cannot wait to just follow up with all of those people and say, guys, we have that many deals at our belt. We have given $2 million back to people. We have given hundreds of thousands of dollars to charity. Now we are no longer an idea. It works. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And, and that was a challenge I faced as well. Um, in our, you know, I don't want to talk about our business, but it, it was a challenge because people said, you know, it's got to be full service. And, and, and most of the um, 
what I refer to now, I kind of coined them as do-it-yourself real estate investors. And I think they're a real good target market for you as well. Correct. They so They want to put in the effort. And they just need some help. So that's what we are, just their help, you know? That, that is correct. So in the, we, we have identified every single task of what the brokers do. And the, the part which takes the biggest amount of time and has add the least amount of value is the related broker being there at the showing. Okay. Uh, what we do because of the traffic be going there coming back it's like two hours of your time so the part that we do not do is attending the showings with the clients we organize it for them yeah. and we also think that it's adding very little value because as a buyer you don't want a broker to tell you if you should like or not an apartment we organize the showing for you you go we debrief after if you want to place an offer we have the whole technology the template we discuss the, the comps, what it should be worth. Uh, we place that offer, we do the negotiation, we introduce you to the best lawyer, mortgage bankers, we do the code board, the documentation, and appraiser all the way to the closing. But the part that I think is prehistoric and which adds very little value and takes the most of the broker's time is to attend showings. Right, right. And that's, and that's a costly thing for them. Um, tell me a little yep. bit about the investor world. So I work specifically with real estate investors, and I honestly would tell you, any real estate investor listening to this, anyone I work closely with that we've had discussions, they will be yep. all over this because it really disturbs them because they make so many offers. And, you know, I have a man that grew from like 30 single family homes to 200 in like 18 months. And the biggest yep. thing that he used to always say to me is like, how do I get around these fees? How do I get around these agent fees? Like, like he, he's finding his own deal. So it troubles him to pay that full 6%, you know? Yeah. So the investors like us for two reasons. First of all, uh, if you're an investor, typically you buy with leverage. Right. Uh, we, so you put 20 down and you get 80% leverage. Okay, and you get to a certain cap rate of let's say three, four, five percent. If on those twenty percent down, you get two percent cash back, it's going to boost your return. So that's what those investors like. They put twenty down, they get eighty from the bank, and from those twenty down at closing, they get two percent back. So their down payment now is no longer twenty; it's eighteen. So in terms of money down, they saved. 10% of their down payment. Second of all, uh, we are investors ourselves, so they are not, we are not brokers trying to uh, push them deals. They come to us and we speak the same language. We speak cap rate, we look at the maintenance, the risk taxes. If we have a database of technology where we model the, the cap rate of properties, and when they call us and say, find me all of the properties in Manhattan, with a 4.5% cap rate, we are going to select for them the properties they want. Uh, a lot of brokers here don't look at real estate from the point of view of uh, an investor. They only look at it from the point of view of their commission. Uh, so they like to talk to us because there's actually a few uh, properties that we sourced for investors sight and seen. They bought from Paris, London, and Dubai. And there's also some properties that we sourced for investors, they ended up not taking it, and I bought it for myself. Okay. To show okay. them that actually it was a good buy. Well, I, I again, I think that getting your message out, we work with a, a client in New Jersey, so offline we'll take care of that. I know he would be super interested in hearing about this system. Um, mm -hmm. So we will do our best to get the word out. We will be posting this on YouTube, and we're going to look at that national platform wherever we can get the word out. Um, so would you say then that real estate investors are a target market for you? Because there's some money. I know you obviously will take anybody, but do you see that as a really good fit? Because they do do a lot of their homework on their own. They know what they want. It, it, exactly. It is. What, what is not a, a really good fit for us 
are people who are who are not sure of what they want, who call us every single day, who need a shrink and who need a broker to attend uh, 50 showing with them, a little bit like a hobby, three years in a row uh, and end up never buying. Maybe yeah. those guys, they actually deserve to pay 6% or 6%. Yeah. <laughs> we, like people, we like people who have been to the process at least, at least once because they don't need to be reinsured. It's not their first time. So typically, we love second-time buyers because they realize that their brokers in the first deal did not add much value. Right. They only took the brokers in the first deal because it was uh, a friend of a friend or a friend of their wife. Uh, and they've been a little disappointed. And we love investors because this is what they want. We put a bid. If the bid is accepted, it goes through. If the bid is not accepted and the numbers don't work, there is, there is no emotional attachment. They don't call us in the middle of the night. They move forward, yes or no. So there is no time wasted. Yeah, good. That's good. That is definitely a matched community there. I will definitely be doing all I could to help yeah. you. Uh, get the word out. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and again, offline, I'm going to mention, well, online, I'll mention to you, um, there are specific real estate investment association groups that would welcome you in there. Um, there are national mm -hmm. platforms, so we'll have to talk about some contacts that I would like to share with you. They'd love to have love you come in to speak. There's, a, you know, no additional fee for you as a growing company, and it will be a great way to get the word out, you know. Mm -hmm. So is there any last things you want to say to the audience? I only have a few more minutes on this recording, so I want to make sure we've captured everything. Uh, how about to, how to contact you? Should I move to that page? <clears throat> uh, which page? Uh, how to contact you? What would be the best way to show well, you? Put that up on the screen? How to, con how to contact us is, is just the, to, to, to leave your name and number, but one last thing that I still would say, Okay. is that one, one thing that I've learned with this company is that we keep talking about technology and who has the best technology and how to make things simple and smooth. And I still realize that real estate is not only about technology. It's not only about artificial intelligence. It's still pretty much about uh, emotions. And as much as I want to make it look like we are a real estate company, People will not put a bid online or upload their social security number or pre-approval letter online. I thought they would at the beginning. They still want to talk to you. To you. They still want the contact. They still want to make sure they talk to a real person. They don't want a robot to send them texts and reminders on their phone nonstop. So I, would, I think we are more of an hybrid. We run very lean with very little cost but real estate remains about emotions. You still need to be involved and to have your heart into it. It's not only about numbers. Yeah, I love that. It, it's still a people business. At the end of the day, it's real people, yes. and it's real people you're helping. And, and again, yes. we operate under that same premise. Like We understand, I'll call it the burden of the landlord, of the real estate investor, as you understand how he feels burdened with those fees and how you can help streamline that process for them I, I, yep. I love that that's that's a really good closing words because mm -hmm. that's what I was saying about adopting technology you know there's somebody that wrote mm -hmm. the book of you know human plus machine and and that's where our strength is going to be is the humans that embrace that machine like you have embrace that technology but understand how to add the emotions to this understand what you're working with and that the machine is not you know they're not going to do it. <laughs> like you said, uh, I, I, I have been just thrilled to spend this time with you. Uh, I did put uh -huh. closing information. I don't know if it does it look big enough. Can you see that? Um, uh, yes. That, and I would say we are, we're still in growing phase. So you've been in the business for longer than us and some of your listeners and viewers as well. If you have any ideas, suggestions, I, even a tweet or a message of encouragement, Anything helps us because we are in gross mode and there is no bad idea. Okay. I love that. Well, I'm going to definitely be calling you as soon as we hang up. I'm going to talk to you about a couple ideas. 
Um, and then this number is the best for them to call that's on the screen. It's the 855 yeah, so That is correct. We bought, we bought the 1855 Nestable. Okay. And then uh, again, you said Twitter, Facebook. There's the email address, info at LinkedIn. Um, that's Correct. the way they should come at you. Come with ideas. Your, the, your most, uh, the most followed is actually Instagram, if you have that, because every day we post those huge, big check. It's a little uh, uh, okay. funny. So we, we, we do our whole communication on us paying customers. Good. I love that. No, I love that. I think that's <laughs> Thank you. I think people can embrace that. They want to see that. That's that really sends home the message of what you're doing. Yep. So, well, I thank you again. I'm going to stop recording. We're going to get this posted just as quick as possible, and I'll offline ask you for a few more things. So, thank you. Thank you very much. For adding so much. Thank value. you. Have a have a great day, and thank you for having me. Bye. Okay. Bye.